This morning, uh, if you have your Bibles with you, I'd like for you to take and open them to the uh, 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. And this morning, I'm going to be reading, uh, there's 13 verses of this chapter. I want to read all 13 verses. And this is uh, the chapter in which, you know, there's a lot of times during the, uh, uh, around uh, Valentine's Day when this scripture is read and, and preached upon. Uh, God laid this upon my heart this morning. Uh, this is a chapter which uh, they call the love chapter because of, of what it says in it. Uh, and we see that uh, beginning there in the first verse of the 13th chapter, 1 Corinthians, as the Apostle Paul wrote to the church there, he said, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understanding all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long in its kind, charity envieth not, charity boldeth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemingly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, that when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, and charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, as we come to you today, we just thank you for your love, Father, for bestowing your love upon us. And Lord, I pray that as we have opened and read thy word today, that, Father, you would bless the reading of the word, and I pray that you would bless the message today. I pray that you would just be with me. I pray that you would give me the words to speak tonight today that I would preach what you'd have me to preach, not my words, not uh, what I know, but Father, what uh, you know and, and will use me to uh, preach to the people today. Lord, I just pray that you would just be with each one of us. I pray that our hearts and our minds would be upon your word this morning, upon what you have for us right now in this hour. Lord, I pray that if there is one here that is lost, that today would be the day when they would realize that they do not have Jesus Christ in their life and that they need him to have eternal life. And Lord, I pray that today would be the day when they would uh, realize that and accept that and come forward and invite Jesus into their hearts and into their life, that they can begin walking a new life in you. Lord, we just pray that you would just uh, speak to each person today. Father, that hears this words. God, that you would just open our spiritual ears. And Lord, as Christians today, that we would realize how great a work of love can be. And Lord, I just pray, just be with me right now. Just hiding behind the cross of Jesus. Father, that as I stand here today, Lord, that he would be lifted up. And Lord, we just pray and ask this all in your Son, Jesus Christ's precious name. And we thank you, God, for what you've done. And Father, for what you're doing. Father, we thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. This morning, as we look at 
at the scripture here in the book of First Corinthians. And I'd like for us, just for a little bit before we really get into this, I would like for us to think about what love is. You know, we can go back and look at many places throughout the scripture, and beginning with uh, the book of Genesis, all the way through uh, the book of Revelation, we see that it speaks about God and his love for man. Amen. Uh, over in the book of Romans, as I was studying this message and thinking about what uh, love is all about, uh, in the fifth chapter uh, of uh, the book of Romans, we see that the Apostle Paul, as he wrote to the church there in, uh, in, that, sixth, uh, in that fifth chapter, he said in that uh, sixth verse, he said, For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Now, just think for a moment, and let that sink in for just a moment. Because, you know, we see here that the Bible says that this was showing God's love to us in a magnificent, wonderful way. Because we see that as it speaks there, that even while we were without strength, even while we were in sin, God sent His only begotten Son. John 3.16 God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We see that He said here in this scripture that uh, for when we were without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. And then he goes on there and he says, For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet free adventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But in verse 8 it says, But God commended his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. And then he goes on and he says, Much more than that being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. And verse 10 says, For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Right there in, in those few verses, the Apostle Paul, he gives us uh, the meaning, he gives us the example of love. He gives us the example of how that we should be in our lives. You know, we see that uh, as we read that scripture in Romans, we see the Bible says that, that God loves all mankind. And it doesn't matter who they are or what they've done. You know, you hear people say, and, and, and you know, over the years, uh, you know, I've heard uh, those people that have testified about how that they were so rotten uh, in their life uh, and, and they had done so many things and they thought there was no way that God could love them and, and save them. But yet, when they come to that place where they realize that, that He loved even them, and, and they gave their life to Christ, that they see that love manifested in their life. And you know, we go on, and, and we see that over in the book of First John, that John, uh, as he spoke there, uh, John said to us uh, in verse 7, uh, the fourth verse, he said, Behold, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Then in verse 9 he says, And this was manifested, the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we may live through Him. And then in verse, in chapter 5 uh, of that same uh, scripture there, uh, uh, we see uh, that it speaks about, uh, it says, Whosoever believes in Jesus uh, uh, is the Christ, is born of God, and everyone that loveth Him, that the God uh, loveth Him also, that is begotten of Him. In chapter 3, as you go backwards just a little bit, we see that John said, Behold, what manner of love uh, the Father hath bestowed upon us, 
that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. But we see over and over again, as it speaks about love, it speaks about how that while we were out in sin, while we were yet without Jesus Christ, that he loved us. And you know, as we go back now to the book of 1 Corinthians, and you know, we see that uh, the, the uh, Corinthian church was probably a, a lot like uh, most churches uh, uh, of the time and, and even churches of today. We see that uh, this was probably a church, and, and you know, as you would read through the, the book of 1 Corinthians, you'd see that there was a lot of problems in the church of Corinth. We see that the Apostle Paul, you know, we see that he had to, uh, to bring them into the focus of what their purpose was. You know, Brother uh, Dallas was speaking this morning. Uh, we, in our Sunday school lesson, we began uh, in the book of uh, Ephesians. Uh, but we see that that was a church uh, uh, that was blessed by God. <laughs> and they did many good things and many good works in the name of Jesus Christ there in Ephesus. But we see that the first church that it speaks of in the book of Revelation is the church at Ephesus. Now it says there, uh, as, uh, as Jesus speaks to the church there, he said, you know, you've done some good things, you've done some good works, but I have something against you because you have left your first love. You have quit doing what you once did. You know, you have quit loving as you once loved. And so, you know, we see that as Paul speaks here in the book of 1 Corinthians, he says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and with of angels and have not charity, or uh, as I've read so many different places and so many different commentaries and, and, and so many uh, different things that says that this love charity <coughs> is also uh, intertwined with the, the word Love, and it says, though that you speak with the, 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 the tongues of men and of angels, and you have not love, he says, you have, are becoming, uh, you have become uh, as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. You know, we see that uh, these are just noises that have been made. And you know, if you get up and you preach, if you get up and you teach, if you get up and you testify, and you get up or you get up uh, and you witness, but you have not love, uh, uh, then uh, these things uh, uh, are as uh, uh, someone who is just making noise because love is not part of it. You know, we see here that throughout the, uh, this scripture this morning, that it says, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity or love, he said, I am nothing. Paul, as he spoke to the church there, he said, you have to understand what the church is all about. You know, first of all, we see that as believers in Jesus Christ, that we have to understand what love is. And, you know, we see that over and over again, as I've read to you, that it's spoken of, of what love is by what God has shown us in our lives. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior... If you've never accepted him and accepted his love, then you, have, then you are a foreigner to what it's speaking of. But you have to come to that place where you realize uh, that God loved you so much that he was willing to give his son, that his son, Jesus Christ, was willing to die that you could have eternal life. And you know, we see that at, then when you begin serving him, you have to serve him with that same love in which he gave you. <coughs> now, you know, the, the English language is, is kind of a funny thing because, you know, we see that uh, uh, the word love, we, we use that word uh, uh, for all different things. You know, we say, well, you know, I, I love that hamburger. 
you know, or I love that dog that I have, or I, I, I love that uh, friend that I have, or, you know, I love my spouse, you know, and, and it all seems to be entwined in the same word. Now, the Greeks, they had several different meanings for uh, the word love. And what Paul was saying here is the word that was, uh, as it was as it was used, is agape love, which that word means a godly love, which is the love that God has for us, and therefore uh, the love in which we should try to bestow upon mankind. You know, as a church, uh, when we begin loving on people, uh, when we begin doing what uh, we are called to do, uh, as the church in Ephesus, when they had taken uh, and, and they quit loving people uh, and they quit serving uh, as they ought to, uh, uh, we see that uh, uh, Jesus said, I've got something against you. And you know, we see that as we look at this scripture this morning, we see that Paul said that if you have the gift of prophecy and you have the, the understanding of mysteries uh, and, and you have all kinds of knowledge uh, and, and you, uh, and, and he said, and though I have all faith that I can take and say to the mountain to be removed. And you remember Jesus as he said to his disciples, if you have the, grain, the, the faith of a grain of mustard seed, uh, you can say uh, to this mountain to be thou removed and it would be cast into the sea. Uh, so you know, we see that he said you didn't have to have a whole lot of faith, but you had to have faith to believe it. Uh, and, and so, you know, we see uh, uh, that he said uh, that you have all these different things, but it doesn't come with love mixed in. He said, I am nothing. Amen. I am nothing. And you know, he goes on and he says, you know, I could bestow all my goods and to, I could take and sell everything I've got. I could take and, and give everything that I have uh, to the poor. He said, I could take uh, and, and even become a martyr. Uh, I could be burned at, at the stake. Uh, uh, you know, we see which was something that was very common in the day of the Apostle Paul. There were many people that had, because of their faith in Jesus Christ, uh, had been burned at the stake by Nero. And, and we see that Paul said, even uh, if, if you had been, your body had been burned at the stake uh, uh, for your faith uh, uh, in Jesus Christ, uh, and he says, and you do not have love, it is going to profit you nothing. Amen. That it's going to be in vain. It only happens when love is involved. It only happens uh, uh, and, and for that the purpose uh, in which God intends it to when we as believers, when we realize uh, that uh, it has to be, it has to be uh, topped or it has to be mixed with love. You know, we see that Paul goes on there and, and he speaks about how that it says love suffers love. Uh, and it's kind and, and every thought and, and you know we see that he goes on with all these different things uh, that he says is love and, and you know we see that the, the church at, at Corinth that they were having a lot of problems they uh, uh, probably were uh, taking and, and uh, rejoicing in things they oughtn't to be uh, and they were doing things that they shouldn't uh, and, and we see that uh, all these things uh, uh, that they were doing Paul kind of pinpointed them at, at them and to them and, and we see that as he did this he did this for the purpose of, of trying to stir them up to the place where they would realize where, who they are, uh, whose they are, and what they should be doing with their life. We see that uh, Paul, as he goes on, you know, we see that Paul says that love never fails in verse 8 there. And he says, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. You know, we see that Paul said, you know, the, the prophecies that, that happen, they're going to fail. They, he said, uh, the tongues, they're going to cease. You know, all these things uh, that the church thinks is so important, uh, and these are 
important things uh, in the church, or they were in the important things of the church of that day, and, and uh, some are still today. But we see that he says there uh, that these things, he says, whether they be prophecies, uh, they shall fail, whether they be tongues, he says, they shall cease. Uh, he said, uh, uh, whether they be knowledge, it shall vanish away. He says, for we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, and he's speaking of Jesus Christ, and he said, when that one that is perfect that comes, then that which is in part shall be done away. You know, we see that the only thing uh, that uh, is spoken of uh, that will last uh, is love. You know, we see the only thing that is spoken of uh, that is uh, uh, the greatest of all three of these uh, is love. You know, we see that Paul didn't say uh, to them uh, uh, that these things are going to last even after he that is perfect comes. Uh, but he said uh, that these things uh, are, are going to pass away. And, and the only thing uh, that will last, the only thing that can last, uh, uh, is the things that we do out of a heart of a godly love, a godly love for our uh, for mankind, because that is what is going to be remembered. We see that Paul, as he goes on there, and he says. In verse 11, he says, When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. He said, But when I became a man, I put away childish things. You know, Paul, as he spoke to the church there, there, there was a lot of things that I'm sure that uh, you could say was childish things. That were things that didn't mean anything that was going on. And Paul said that I gave up all those things uh, and when I became a man. And, and when I became a man, he said, I put away these childish things. He said, for now we shall see through a glass darkly. You know, as believers in Jesus Christ, uh, if you have been saved by the grace of God, uh, we see uh, through a glass darkly. Uh, we don't see uh, the whole picture uh, of what uh, uh, our life uh, uh, means. Uh, uh, you know, we see that, uh, and you know, we see that uh, you hear them talk about uh, uh, from when, when a president leaves office, how what their legacy was. You know, and it seems like that it's such a big thing for a president uh, to leave a great legacy. And, and you know, we see as believers in Jesus Christ, uh, uh, we should be leaving a great legacy. And, and that legacy is not how much we can accumulate in this world. It is not how uh, many uh, uh, people that uh, uh, we have taken it and uh, we have done wrong, uh, but what we have done in the name of love, uh, those things are the things uh, uh, that we need to be thinking about uh, as believers. You know, we see that he goes on in this and he says, for I, uh, he says, but then uh, face to face, you know, right now, we see through a glass darkly or dimly. You know, we don't see the full picture. We don't see. But one day we're going to see the, the face of Jesus Christ, the glory, uh, uh, what it's all about. Uh, and we're going to realize uh, that the things that we've done in the name of love uh, are the things uh, that have truly meant something and will last. You know, we see that he goes on there, and he said, and in verse uh, uh, 13, and he says, And now, body and faith, hope, and charity, or love, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. The greatest of these is love. Amen. Oh, you know, Paul, as he spoke to the church there, Paul said, you know, the things that, that we do, you know, the, the, the greatest virtue uh, that there is and that will go into the, into the age of the uh, kingdom age, the millennial age, and the kingdom age is love. Amen. Because, you know, we see that faith is something that we have now that is going to be, uh, once, once we get into, into glory, 
You know, that faith is, is going to, is going to uh, not be there because we're going to be face to face with the Lord. And hope is the same way. But you know, we see that God is love, and that love will continue on. Amen. That love will continue on throughout eternity. You know, we see that as you look in, in the book of Revelation, and you see what it says there about love. You know, we see that love will last where everything else falls apart. Amen. Because we see that this is the attribute, this is the virtue of God. And we as uh, individuals today, we need to have that virtue of that godly love where we can show forth unto the world the love, that we can bring them in and love them, love them to Jesus Christ. That should be our purpose and our goal. Amen. As believers, as churches, we should be wanting to show forth God. You know, there's a lot of a lot of words, a lot of songs, a lot of things that they say out in our world today and have said, you know, they're I, as I was uh, as I was uh, studying this lesson, uh, uh, their song years ago, and I, I don't even know the whole song. The only part I know of this song is it, say, it says something about uh, what's love got to do with it. It's a second candy book, and that's the, that's all I know of that song. And, and I don't remember who sung it. I don't even remember the, the song, but I do remember that part of it. And they, you know, we see that that's the way the world looks at love. Yeah. You know, they, they look at the love so far off of what it truly is. But you know, we see thanks to God. We that are believers, we see love in an entirely different way. Because Jesus Christ loves us. He, he gave himself for us. He died that we can have eternal life. And you know, today, wherever you're at in your life, you may not know Jesus Christ as your Savior. You may have never given your life to Him. But today, as the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart, and as you've heard that says that God commended His love for us, and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That is love. That is love. Because He loved us so much. That even while we were out in sin, even while we were rejecting Him, He was loving us. And that is true love. And you know, we see that uh, as you hear her the message, as the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, then you need to accept Him today. You need to pray to Him and ask Him, forgiveness of your sin and invite him into your life, that you too can be a part of his family, his holy family where you can feel that love of God. And maybe today you're a child of God and God and you haven't been feeling that love in your life like you ought to. Maybe you need to come and, and pray and, and maybe you need to, to pray and, and ask him for a closer walk where you can Feel and experience that love that will surround you as a child of God. Whatever the need is in your life today, we're going to invite you today to come. Invite you for a decision in your life as we stand.